Lesson 7 Your mercy reaches unto the heavens Sabbath afternoon February 10 I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my God. Psalm 40, verse 17 Do not let your great need discourage you. The Savior of sinners, the friend of the friendless, with compassion infinitely greater than that of a tender mother for a loved and afflicted child, is inviting, Look unto me, and be ye saved. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. There is danger of not making Christ's teachings a personal matter, of not receiving them as though they were addressed to us personally. In his words of instruction, Jesus means me. I may appropriate to myself his merits, his death, his cleansing blood, as fully as though there were not another sinner in the world for whom Christ died. That I may know him, page 280. Be constantly learning of Jesus, constantly increasing in faith and growing in grace and the knowledge of the truth. The Lord is our helper. The Lord is our shield. He will not leave nor forsake us. Angels of God are engaged in this work of proclaiming the message of warning for the world. Of ourselves, we can do nothing. We are as weak as water without the Spirit of the Lord. Our strength is in hiding in Jesus. Let Christ appear as the one altogether lovely and the chief among ten thousand. This Day with God, page 60. You must not sink down discouraged. The faint-hearted will be made strong. The desponding will be made to hope. God has a tender care for his people. His ear is open unto their cry. I have no fears for God's cause. He will take care of his own cause. Our duty is to fill our lot and place, live humble at the foot of the cross, and live faithful holy lives before him. While we do this, we shall not be ashamed, but our souls will confide in God with holy boldness. My heart is fixed, trusting in God. We have a whole Savior. We can rejoice in his rich fullness. I long to be more devoted to God, more consecrated to him. This world is too dark for me. Jesus said he would go away and prepare mansions for us, that where he is, we may be also. Praise God for this. My heart leaps with joy at the cheering prospect. While we feel and realize the wondrous love of God, we shall not hold our peace. We shall sacrifice to God with the voice of thanksgiving and make melody to him with our hearts and voices. Let us plant our feet upon the rock of ages, and then we will have abiding support and consolation. Our soul will repose in God with unshaken confidence. Reflecting Christ, page 351. Sunday February 11. His mercy endures forever. This morning my soul is filled with praise and thanksgiving to God from whom come all our mercies and blessings. The Lord is good, and His mercies endure forever. I will praise Him who is the light of my countenance and my God. He is the source of all efficiency and power. Why do we not praise him by speaking words of hope and comfort to others? Why are our lips so silent? Speech is a gift of heaven, and it should be used in sounding forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh, how much good would be accomplished were God honored by all who profess to be Christians! The light of the world is shining upon men in richest blessing. Every provision has been made for the supplying of our temporal and spiritual needs, yet how little thanksgiving the giver receives. That I may know him, page 219. God intended to show the Israelites that the conquest of Canaan was not to be ascribed to them. The captain of the Lord's host overcame Jericho. He and his angels were engaged in the conquest. Christ commanded the armies of heaven to throw down the walls of Jericho and prepare an entrance for Joshua and the armies of Israel. God, 
in this wonderful miracle not only strengthened the faith of his people in his power to subdue their enemies, but rebuked their former unbelief. Jericho had defied the armies of Israel and the God of heaven. And as they beheld the host of Israel marching around their city once each day, they were alarmed. But they looked at their strong defenses, their firm and high walls, and felt sure that they could resist any attack. But when their firm walls suddenly tottered and fell with a stunning crash like peals of loudest thunder, they were paralyzed with terror and could offer no resistance. The Story of Redemption, page 181. The psalmist says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Psalm 19 verses 1 to 3. All these wonders in the heavens are only doing the work appointed them. They are the Lord's agencies. God is the superintendent as well as the creator of all things. The divine being is engaged in upholding the things that he has created. The same hand that holds the mountains and balances them in position guides the worlds in their mysterious march around the sun. There is scarcely an operation of nature to which we may not find reference in the word of God. The word declares that he maketh his sun to rise and the rain to descend. Matthew chapter 5 verse 45. He maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Psalm 147, verse 8. Selected Messages, Book 1, pages 293 and 294. Monday, February 12. Create in me a clean heart. David's repentance was sincere and deep. There was no effort to palliate his crime. No desire to escape the judgments threatened inspired his prayer. But he saw the enormity of his transgression against God. He saw the defilement of his soul. He loathed his sin. It was not for pardon only that he prayed, but for purity of heart. David did not in despair give over the struggle. In the promises of God to repentant sinners, he saw the evidence of his pardon and acceptance. This passage in David's history is full of significance to the repenting sinner. It is one of the most forcible illustrations given us of the struggles and temptations of humanity and of genuine repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Through all the ages, it has proved a source of encouragement to souls that, having fallen into sin, were struggling under the burden of their guilt. Thousands of the children of God who have been betrayed into sin, when ready to give up to despair, have remembered how David's sincere repentance and confession were accepted by God, notwithstanding he suffered for his transgression. And they also have taken courage to repent and try again to walk in the way of God's commandments. Whoever under the reproof of God will humble the soul with confession and repentance, as did David, may be sure that there is hope for him. Whoever will in faith accept God's promises will find pardon. The Lord will never cast away one truly repentant soul. Patriarchs and Prophets, pages 725 and 726. We should remember that all make mistakes, even men and women who have had years of experience sometimes err. But God does not cast them off because of their errors. To every erring son and daughter of Adam, he gives the privilege of another trial. Jesus loves to have us come to him just as we are, sinful, helpless, dependent. We may come with all our weakness, our folly, our sinfulness, and fall at his feet in penitence. It is his glory to encircle us in the arms of his love and to bind up our wounds, to cleanse us from all impurity. Here is where thousands fail. They do not believe that Jesus pardons them personally, individually. They do not take God at his word. It is the privilege of all who comply with the conditions to know for themselves that pardon is freely extended for every sin. Put away the suspicion that God's promises are not meant for you. They are for every repentant transgressor. Strength and grace have been provided through Christ to be brought by ministering angels to every believing soul. None are so sinful that they cannot find strength, purity, and righteousness in Jesus who died for them. 
He is waiting to strip them of their garments stained and polluted with sin and to put upon them the white robes of righteousness. He bids them live and not die. The Faith I Live By, page 134. Tuesday, February 13. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. Psalm 130, verses 3 and 4. To those who have made strange paths for their feet, the Lord offers words of encouragement. He will accept their prayers if they will repent and be converted. Through the infinite sacrifice of Christ and through faith in his name, they may receive the promises of God. The sons of Adam may become sons of God. Oh, how full of thankfulness we should be that by the act of Christ in assuming humanity, fallen men are granted a second trial. Christ places them on vantage ground. Through connection with him, they may be laborers together with God. Through the grace given daily by Christ, they may be elevated and ennobled to become the sons and daughters of God. Such love is without parallel. This Day with God, page 255. Men may say, I forgive all the injuries you have done to me, but their forgiveness would not blot out one sin. But the voice sounding from Calvary, My son, my daughter, thy sins be forgiven thee, is all efficacious. That word alone has power and awakens the gratitude in the grateful heart. We have a mediator. There is but one channel of forgiveness, and that channel is ever open. And through that channel, a rich flood of divine mercy and forgiveness comes pouring down to us. Many have expressed wonder that God demanded so many slain victims and sacrificial offerings of the Jews. But it was to rivet in their minds the great and solemn truth that without shedding of blood, there was no remission of sins. Never shall we see and comprehend the intense anguish of the sufferings of the spotless Lamb of God until we feel how deep is the pit from which we have been delivered, how grievous the sin of which humanity is guilty, and by faith grasp the full and entire pardon. The Upward Look, page 219. If you make a mistake, turn your defeat into victory. The lessons that God sends will always, if well learned, bring help in due time. Put your trust in God. Pray much and believe. Trusting, hoping, believing, holding fast the hand of infinite power, you will be more than conquerors. True workers walk and work by faith. Sometimes they grow weary with watching the slow advance of the work when the battle wages strong between the powers of good and evil. But if they refuse to fail or be discouraged, they will see the clouds breaking away and the promise of deliverance fulfilling. Through the mist with which Satan has surrounded them, they will see the shining of the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness. Wait, not in fretful anxiety, but in undaunted faith and unshaken trust. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 7, pages 244 and 245. Wednesday, February 14. Praise to the Majestic and Merciful God. It is not the manifestation of God's great and awful majesty and unparalleled power that will leave us without excuse if we refuse Him our love and obedience. It is the love, the compassion, the patience, the long-suffering that he has shown which will witness against those who do not offer him the willing service of their lives. Those who turn to God with heart and soul and mind will find in him peaceful security. Sons and Daughters of God, page 19. We need to praise God more for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Psalm 107, verse 8. We are the constant recipients of God's mercies, and yet how little gratitude we express, how little we praise Him for what He has done for us. Our God is a tender, merciful Father. 
God would not have his children for whom so great salvation has been provided act as if he were a hard exacting taskmaster. He is their best friend, and when they worship him, he expects to be with them, to bless and comfort them, filling their hearts with joy and love. The Lord desires his children to take comfort in his service and to find more pleasure than hardship in his work. He desires that those who come to worship him shall carry away with them precious thoughts of his care and love, that they may be cheered in all the employments of daily life, that they may have grace to deal honestly and faithfully in all things. We must gather about the cross. Christ and him crucified should be the theme of contemplation, of conversation, and of our most joyful emotion. We should keep in our thoughts every blessing we receive from God, and when we realize his great love, we should be willing to trust everything to the hand that was nailed to the cross for us. Steps to Christ, pages 102 and 103. The hour cometh, Jesus said, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Religion is not to be confined to external forms and ceremonies. The religion that comes from God is the only religion that will lead to God. In order to serve him aright, we must be born of the divine spirit. This will purify the heart and renew the mind, giving us a new capacity for knowing and loving God. It will give us a willing obedience to all his requirements. This is true worship. It is the fruit of the working of the Holy Spirit. By the Spirit, every sincere prayer is indicted, and such prayer is acceptable to God. Wherever a soul reaches out after God, there the Spirit's working is manifest, and God will reveal himself to that soul. For such worshipers he is seeking. He waits to receive them and to make them his sons and daughters. The Desire of Ages, page 189. Thursday, February 15. Forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 4. God has given us the gift of speech that we may recite to others his dealing with us, that his love and compassion may touch other hearts, and that praise may arise from other souls also to him who has called them out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Lord has said, Ye are my witnesses, Isaiah chapter 43 verse 10. But all who are called to be witnesses for Christ must learn of him that they may be efficient witnesses. As children of the heavenly king, they should educate themselves to bear testimony in a clear, distinct voice and in such a manner that no one may receive the impression that they are reluctant to tell of the mercies of the Lord. Counsels to Parents, Teachers, and Students, pages 242 and 243. For us he endured the agony of the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, why was all this suffering, this ignominy, and torturing agony? It was that by this sacrifice of himself his love might stand revealed, that he might woo men from the ways of sin. After man has cost so much, will he leave him now? Oh, no, no, he is faithful that has promised. His arms are outstretched to clasp the repentant believing ones to his heart of love with all the tenderness of divine affection. In Jesus we have an enduring, unchanging friend, and though all earthly prospects should fail and every earthly friend prove treacherous, yet he is faithful still. His servants are as dear to him as the apple of the eye. In trial, in want, in perplexity and distress, we are not alone. At every step, in tones of assurance, he bids us, Follow me. I will never leave nor forsake thee. Manuscript Releases, Volume 12, page 115. Bible history stays the fainting heart with the hope of God's mercy. We need not despair when we see that others have struggled through discouragements like our own, have fallen into temptations even as we have done, and yet have recovered their ground and been blessed of God. 
the words of inspiration comfort and cheer the erring soul. Although the patriarchs and apostles were subject to human frailties, yet through faith they obtained a good report, fought their battles in the strength of the Lord, and conquered gloriously. Thus may we trust in the virtue of the atoning sacrifice and be overcomers in the name of Jesus. Humanity is humanity the world over from the time of Adam down to the present generation, and the love of God through all ages is without a parallel. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 15. For further reading, The Upward Look, The Results of Inner Renewal, page 30, and Selected Messages, Let Christ Appear, Book 1, pages 155 and 156.